Hello everyone, my name is Aldrin Lupasan and we are here at our UC Irvine's commencement ceremony for engineering a SEER design review. Uh, Will and I are fourth year environmental engineers and we are showing, showcasing our system back here. I'm Will, also a graduating senior from uh, the Sam Wally School of Engineering here at UC Irvine and uh, it's an awesome day to be out here and be showing off our system so we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what we do. So the name of the project is Renew 3D Print or Renewable 3D Printing. What we want to do is take waste from 3D printing and repurpose it so that we can use it on 3D printers once again. Alright, so in order to recycle our plastic from either a cup or a bottle, we have to start with our grinder system. And at first we take the cup and then we put it in our first grinder, which is our coarse grinder. And that grinds it down into a very coarse, large type of plastic similar to what you can see here. And then once we have that, we take this coarse grind and put it into our second grinder, which has a filter on the bottom of it, and filters the plastic grind to a small and consistent size so that we can then efficiently put it in our extruder and have it melt at a usable rate. So after we have our consistent grind, we put it through our extruder, which melts down the plastic and extrudes it out in a wire-like fashion. It then passes through our diameter controller, which controls the speed of the spooler to keep the diameter consistent. So the factory supplied spooler wheels right here are actually black and a lot denser than the ones we have on here. So we had to design and 3D print uh, spooler wheels so that the filament wouldn't deform when it ran through those. So these are printed out of a special blend of flexible plastic and that helped alleviate the problems we had. So our whole system is powered up to our batteries. And our batteries are powered up to our renewable energy or specifically solar panel. Before we start the system, we make sure that the batteries are fully charged 100% and if we use a, a battery tracking device to check the capacity of the batteries, once it's 100%, we plug in our system into the batteries and run the system. And with that, we'll be able to operate the system. So our inspiration was a couple years ago, we were on the Solar Decathlon team for uh, UC Irvine, and we were tasked with building the tool room of the future, and that was essentially making a, a new workshop. What's the workshop in 10 years going to look like? And that included 3D printing. Uh, but Alder and I are environmental engineers, so we wanted to explore how we can make 3D printing sustainable, and that's where we started thinking about recycling the plastic into 3D printable plastic. So uh, basically, we uh, created this system to take waste from both 3D printers as well as conventional plastic waste like solo cups, coffee lids, things like that and turn that into 3D printable filament. So that was all kind of where we got inspired to work on this process a couple years ago. One of the key things that we want to focus on is 3D printing is an emerging market. And so we know that 3D printing itself creates a lot of waste from the support material and some of the failed prints. So we want to tackle the problem head on before it becomes a problem in the future. So. There's also this also has kind of turned into a, a, another environmental solution to a lot of other plastic pollution. The, the United States wastes about six trillion pounds of plastic every year, and so that's billions of dollars lost in material costs. So we can actually, using this system, recover a lot of material we use uh, and also help save the planet in the process. Less of that plastic will go to landfill, less will fall in the ocean, and thus we'll have less plastic polluting uh, our waterways and our uh, land. So the next step for us and for our, the future of our project is actually we've turned it into a startup called Closed Loop Plastics. We're wearing the shirts today. Uh, we're essentially creating a, a startup that's going to sell these systems, the next version of the system, uh, which will be fully automated and easy to use in any kind of institutional organization, such as a university or a makerspace, things like that. And we can take this system and any we can kind of decentralize how we recycle. Because that's a major problem right now. Right now we send our plastic to a recycling center where it then gets shipped to Taiwan and gets back here and then it's, in, uh, it's made into textiles in Taiwan, it gets back here, it's made into jackets. It's now traveled 19,000 miles and emitted half its weight in carbon dioxide. So that's a big problem for the pla current plastic uh, recycling system. We want to decentralize it and give a lot of different communities access to recycling right in their hometown. That way they can take the plastic waste they generate and recycle it without traveling less, more than a mile. So, so we've been talking for probably 15 years now about how 3D printing is going to revolutionize how we make and how we work. And in some cases, there are some naysayers who you know, constantly talk about we've been promising that for too long, it's never going to happen. But truly, with a lot of the new production uh, equipment we have out there, the, the new Airwolf printers, a lot of other manufacturers are getting in the game of consumer-grade 3D printing. So that means that this industry is growing rapidly. And truly, within the next five years, I would say many households will have a 3D printer in them already. I mean, the price points are getting lower. It's just every indicator says, I mean, this is where, where I would equate we are in like the early days of the personal computer. Everyone was like, it's a fad, no one's gonna use it, who cares about the personal computer? Now, obviously, we all have one in our pockets. So, 
the idea is that 3D printing is on that cusp. We're getting there. We're going to be in the household. It's going to be one of these things where in five years, people aren't going to know what their lives were like before 3D printing. So that's where this is going. That's why we want to tackle this problem now, because that way we know it's going to take off.